Hi, I'm Patu from Free Fincal. This is the stock portfolio ana analysis for January 2022. Uh, as uh, regular viewers would know that I have been posting this analysis on a monthly basis for the last few months and I usually compare uh, my stock portfolio with an equivalent investment in the Nifty Index and also the Nifty 100 low volatility 30 uh, index. Now, uh, I st only started investing in uh, stocks after I became financially independent and after my son's uh, future portfolio was in a uh, fairly good place. Uh, so uh, I'm uh, the way I look at stocks and the way I invest in stocks would be very different from how a new uh, investor would look would uh, look at it or a young earner would look at it. And uh, uh, these, the value of the stock portfolio is only about 11% of my total retirement portfolio. So still the, the mutual funds and the NPS is still a, a significant portion of it, but it's no longer experimental. I started it as an experimental portfolio. It was an idea that I wanted to pursue, but then it grew in, in value. Um, every month I um, regularly invest in mutual funds and uh, only if I have the money left, uh, I uh, uh, buy stocks uh, with it. And uh, I'm trying to build what is what I would like to call as the ideal retirement portfolio. So the ideal retirement portfolio, in my opinion, will have income from a pension uh, that's called income flooring. So whatever is my uh, expenses in the first year of retirement, that will be uh, the income uh, from pension for, for, for my lifetime. Then I will have liquid assets in fixed income and equity to handle inflation, passive income from a few sources. Uh, Mm. Rent is is possible is one possibility, but I don't have that for now. Um, active income as a free agent, whatever you want to do uh, with your time, you can uh, actively engage in some kind of uh, activities for income. Basically, for uh, uh, just a way to spend time productively. Then you have dividend income. So this is the stock portfolio is part of that dividend income. Um, some of my stocks are um, uh, offer a dividend. I mean, all of them have offered a dividend, but some of them are offered a higher dividend than others. I have not so far um, reinvested the dividends. Uh, I mean, I, I, I just invest regularly as much as I can, but I'm not specifically look uh, track kept track of the dividends and uh, try to uh, reinvest them. Now, the way I uh, pick stocks, I have talked about this several times and I have a um, video called buy stocks easily without breaking your head. I'll try to link it up in the on the top uh, bar. Um, so the idea is to first look for uh, stick to large caps, then look for stocks which have a uh, good health, good financial health. That is, they should not have debt, preferably uh, very little to no debt and uh, then they should have uh, low volatility. I uh, I look at the low volatility over the last uh, one year. I have a screener which I publish monthly for this. And then within the low volatility, once I purchase the stocks uh, based on low volatility and good financial health, what I have been doing is look for momentum within that uh, stock basket. So my stock portfolio as on January 2022 is uh, Asian Paints, 19%, uh, Pedilite uh, almost 16%, TCS 15%, Infi uh, again 15%, Hindustan Unilever 10%, HTFC is about 7%, Dabur uh, 6%, Vipro about 4%, Colpal 3%, Marico 2.6% and ITC 2.17%. So what I've been doing is I've been chasing momentum. So what I do is uh, I look at the, uh, uh, the holdings. And I look at the stocks, the overall gain, whichever stock has got the highest overall gain uh, since inception, that is since the time I purchased it, I, I try to put more money in it. So I've been chasing the momentum in that sense. I'm not claiming this is a great idea or this is something that you do. This is something that I have been doing. Many people have asked me how I choose the weights. I don't make any particular uh, decision about the weights. I just chase the momentum within this portfolio. I don't look for stocks outside this portfolio. And uh, so far it has panned out well, but that's just luck and there's no skill involved in this. Uh, please don't follow this kind of strategy. I am at the position in life where I can do this. Therefore, I do this. I'm, I, I don't recommend it. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying this in full disclosure, but I'm not recommending it. Please keep that in uh, mind. 
So uh, I have a, a stock XIRR calculator which uh, uh, properly takes into account all the dividends, properly reinvests them and uh, calculates the XIRR. So um, uh, the, the total uh, uh, return of the, the absolute return is basically the, div uh, the returns from dividends plus the uh, absolute return from the, the capital gains. Then from that total return, the CAGR is calculated using the average years. The average year is basically the, the weighted average based on the years and also the investment made. And uh, uh, I also uh, compared the performance with the with the equivalent investments in UTI, uh, Nifty 50 index and also the Nifty 100 low volatility 30. So these are the uh, absolute gains, uh, dividend gain, total gain of all the stocks. You can look at that, look at that in the article. I'm not going to read it here. The absolute return of the stock portfolio is about 29.6%. Uh, this includes the dividends. The UTI Nifty index fund absolute return is 24.3% and the Nifty 100 low volatility 30 is about 21.22%. About and then uh, 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 then you have the corresponding CAGRs and XIRRs. The XIRR of the stock portfolio is 21.3%. Uh, the way the XIRR is a very tricky calculation because of the way in which dividends are uh, computed. That's why although the absolute gain of the stock portfolio is higher, the XIRR is a little bit lesser than the UTI uh, Nifty 50 fund. So like I said, this is uh, my portfolio and I'm at a stage uh, uh, where I can afford to do these kind of experiments and I'm doing this. So please, uh, uh, do, I mean, uh, exercise your own prudence and research and, and invest.